morning. Uh, they said we could introduce ourselves. Um, so I'm Kurt Wagner with Recode. I'm an amazing journalist. Uh, win plenty of awards and really influence everything that happens here in Silicon Valley. This is Dave Jacobat. Do you want to introduce yourself? I, I'm happy to, but I'm a little disappointed. They told me Chris Body was going to be here. <laughs> Uh, you're stuck with me. Okay. Yeah. Um, my name's Dave Jakubowski. Um, I work on um, measurement, the audience network, and our identity products uh, at Facebook. And the most influential Facebook exec, besides Mark Zuckerberg, probably. Oh, right? yeah, that guy. Since we're yeah, rolling yeah. with our own yeah, I've, heard, I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, yes, thank you all for being <laughs> here. Um, Dave and I are going to dive deep on what Facebook's yeah. doing around uh, ad tech, but also just the ad strategy more broadly. We were sure. talking backstage. Sure. Uh, we've actually done this before. Yep. Uh, this might be, it's definitely time, it might be time number three, actually, that we've sat on stage together. I was just going to say, I think it's three. Um, and so you are, I always think of you as the ad tech guy at Facebook. You were just telling me backstage, you're, yes, you are the ad tech guy, but not really the ad tech guy. So like, yeah. what do you, I guess maybe to set the stage here, what is it that you're doing over there if you're not the ad tech guy? Yeah, uh, I, I get the ad tech guy stamp um, wherever I go, and um, I fight it as much as I can, but I should probably just embrace it. Sure. Um, I, I fight it, I, what I was kind of saying backstage is, um, I fight it because ad tech has this connotation that kind of comes with it. And um, ad tech has this, um, you know, full stack, open RTB, cookies moving around, ad network, SSP, acronym soup. A lot of buzzwords. A um, lot of buzzwords. I, every time somebody says the word, I think of the, the very famous Terry Kawaja slide. Um, and the world just isn't that anymore. And so I'm v internally you know, trying to get people to think about all these things differently. Everything I work on is technically an advertising technology. Sure. Um, but it, it's very, the world has moved really fast, way faster than I think anybody expected it to, especially over the last two years, even the last 12 months. And we're watching an accelerating rate of change uh, happening all because of mobile. So much so that I think... 10 years from now, people will be talking about mobile the same way they talk about um, the Industrial Revolution. So it's still, it's still technology, of course, that's serving these ads. People are buy, using technology to buy the ads, of serve them. Is it, you know, uh, is ad tech, like, I guess, what, so what is it that you are doing then, right? Sure. If you don't want to be the ad tech person, like, what do you want to be doing and is it just simply that that has become too complicated for people to kind of, as yeah. ad tech has become more mainstream, is it, you know, people can't grasp all of the different terminology, or why do you want to shy away from being associated with that, if that is kind of what you guys do? Um, you know, to be honest, it's a little bit of a, a provocative play. Um, everything that you just saw and everything that you were just listening to has you looking at screens and customer interactions differently. And that's what the device world has done. It's made us think about things differently. Um, he put up a stat there about uh, most of the value um, starts at three seconds and is really um, your, uh, your retention, your recall, and all the kind of the, the good metrics around video happen in that five to 10 second sweet spot. So if you build your creative with the punchline at you know, second 28, um, no dice. No dice. Right. And that's a new way of thinking for a lot of people. So if you don't grab this new format and this up-and-coming um, group of folks with the disposable income, if you don't grab them, they live in this world. They grew up in this world. They were born mobile. Sure. And so if you don't think a little differently about what you're doing, you're, frankly, your competition will. So I, I used kind of the ad tech thing to, to kind of force a discussion about what it is we're really trying to accomplish. And so I work on um, three things. The foundational layer is identity. That's um, the, the bedrock of, of how we make sure that there's actual real, here's a crazy concept, there's actually real people watching the ads. I know that's crazy. Huh? Weird. I know. So you're, and, and when you say identity, you mean both on Facebook but also off Facebook, both. right? And I think we're going to talk about that 
yep. a little later, but sure. just both. You guys um, always know that I'm where I am, basically, because I have this phone in my pocket. Uh, well, just for the record, you went to the creepy place. I didn't. <laughs> um, we'll get to a very creepy place uh, later, yeah. I'm sure. Okay. But. Um, but, but making sure that when you've logged in and you've chosen um, sure. to engage um, with the app, that um, that experience is the personalized experience that you expect it to be. Um, and so that's kind of the, the, the bedrock internal guts. Right. doesn't really impact anything outside of, uh, outside of, um, of our, our walls from a product standpoint. Gotcha. Built on that is measurement. And measurement is all about helping marketers see value clearly. Um, we got into a couple of discussions um, already, but when you're talking about measurement, really one fundamental thing matters is... Did you help somebody sell more stuff, and can you prove it? And that's the fundamental thing that we're trying to do um, with measurement. So I like to take the measurement conversation away from all the garbly gook of the guts of cookies and DMPs and DSPs and the acronym soup that the industry has designed to make it confusing. It's not. Did you send an ad to somebody who bought something? And if you're getting baffled with bullshit, the whole point of it is... Is to, is to have a conversation is, why does this feel so convoluted? Why does this feel so hard? It, it shouldn't be. And that's our mission um, with measurement. And then on the, um, on the publisher, on the tools side, it's maintaining access to high quality inventory. And our definition of high quality is really out there. It's very complicated. It's human and viewable. That's it. That's it. So you need to uh, make sure that I'm seeing a good ad. You need to make sure that it's me who's seen the ad, the identity, and then hopefully be able to tell your advertiser I went out and actually bought something to, to condense all of your responsibilities down. Yeah, I know. sounds crazy, huh? It's big. Yeah. Um, so the last time we talked, we were talking about ad tech, and we were talking about an ad stack, and you were saying Facebook wants to control the stack, right, which is another cliche for saying we want to basically operate this whole process so that anybody who wants to buy or sell an ad on a mobile device, a desktop, whatever, they can do it through Facebook. Um, Kurt, you've known me long enough. We don't want to control anything. You don't want to control don't anything, want to... but if you did, maybe that would be one of the things you might want to control. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you still <laughs> want to control that or uh, be involved in all of those things? Um, and if not, what, how has your mindset changed in the last year? The... We had an interest. This is going. This is actually a couple of years ago. It's um, been a while. Yeah, um, we're, we're getting, Live Rail still existed. Yeah, we're, we're we'll getting, talk about uh, that. Uh, okay. <laughs> a little foreshadowing. All right, um, we're getting old because um, a couple of years ago, this is two and a half years ago ish, um, we had a conversation about the stack, and I think that everybody, including a whole bunch of people on our team. Um, thought that what we would do is kind of go do a double-click replace kind of sack. Um, and it's funny because I looked at one of the original decks from when I first joined that was kind of the thesis that we kind of circulated. And it was fascinating to look at the consumer trends that were kind of at the front of the deck where you kind of set up, you know, what are the trends and how vastly different they are today. Um, but the principles remained the same. And the principle, principles were all around measurement and value and high quality inventory. And I think what really happened is the evolution of where human beings are seeing ads changed incredibly rapidly. This year, as we sit right now, 63% of the ads that are run will be on mobile devices. Oh. The, the year of mobile didn't feel like... <laughs> Sorry, I was, like, feel like we were waiting for the ooh yeah, from the crowd. Thank you, I appreciate that. You're welcome. I appreciate that. <laughs> but it's more than half, more than half of what everybody in this room uh, and beyond, what the ecosystem is spending their dollars on, happens on a mobile phone. Yet... All of the mechanics, all of the planning, all of the things that we base that on are based on the smaller part. 
and that number is easily going to be 70 next year. Mm-hmm. Probably eMarketer kind of says it'll settle around an 80 20 rule. That kind of maps to kind of most trends that you see. Um, and so I think that that, ha- that happened in like a 12 to 18 month kind of span that quickly. And so as you got into building the stack, you quickly realized that that thing doesn't matter that much anymore. Okay. It doesn't help um, move people to where customers are. And so if you're really going to chase human and viewable, um, you got to do some things a little differently. So is it basically like the, the, the stack that you envisioned originally was primarily for what? De- a desktop world? And desktop now you're saying world. you don't need all of the same technology in yep. order to survive in a mobile world. Yep. That's- desktop cookie world. Here, I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll give you a, a fascinating data point. Um, I grew up like many of you in kind of the desktop uh, cookie world and we've all put together our um, myriad hodgepodges of various stacks that we've used over um, over time. And so one of the first thing that Facebook did to get into this was Atlas. And we built Atlas um, in the ad server and we're pretty straightforward that we that the ad server is the system of record and it's really a counting machine and we were going to take that thing and expand it um, through to measurement, which we did and are still doing. Third-party ad servers can access about 15% of the inventory on mobile. Of that 60-whatever percent you said. Yeah, of the 63. Um, it can access about 15% of it. You're like, well... Where's all the rest of it? Well, it's sitting much more in API integrations, which means DSPs don't work, DMPs don't work. So like all the acronym soup of the stack that you were trying to build over here that was differentiated on features, all of a sudden in this new world where most of the inventory is, doesn't work the same way. And so when you start to break that apart, it all of a sudden becomes much more about data flow. And that measurement layer becomes the unifying portion but it's not a stack so much as it is as a way of facilitating access and tying different pieces of data together. And that's the, what we call the cross everything problem. Cross device, cross browser, offline to online. Sure. And that world is far more about stitching together data flow than it is about any set of features lined up on, on top of each other. So. It's kind of the anti-stack. Like, oh, gosh. There is no okay. stack. Yeah, there you go. So it's going, it's going more yeah. about being able to actually prove that, again, I guess maybe tie back to your original thing, that me, Kurt, is seeing this ad on Facebook and then actually making a purchase. It's not, and, and obviously correct me if I'm wrong, maybe yeah. it's, it's a little bit less about delivering that experience as it is ultimately tracking, measuring, and then proving that it worked? You, gotta do, you, ha- you have to do the spectrum. If you can't... But to, remember, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a geek, so take this with a grain of salt. It all starts with measurement. Okay. So if you can't measure it, you can't see what happened. You don't know if it went to a human. Um, you don't know if it was viewable. Yeah. And if you don't know how it was impacting your sales, why were you buying it? From there, you can go into, now what I need to do is get good at capturing that attention of that user when I, when I am comfortable that I know that I can actually reach human beings. Okay. So that's when you're, you get into creative, you get into your offers, you get into your frequencies, you get into kind of all the rest of the second order things. But to me, the first order thing is, do you know what the heck happened at all? Right. Uh, I want to get into the offline and cross device tracking stuff. Cause you guys have made some recent announcements in that area. But before we, jump too far away from this, this stack idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me about LiveRail. So mm-hmm. you guys bought LiveRail a few mm-hmm. years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that it's done, do you want to just tell us how much you paid for it? Somewhere between 400 and $500 million is what I've read. Uh, you know, you're so good at speculating. I wouldn't, it I wouldn't, sounds like I wouldn't a wanna, really great number. I wouldn't want to get in the way of, sure. of all the guests. So you spend a lot of money on LiveRail. Yep. Uh, it is now summer of 2016. Mm-hmm. Again, two years later, mm-hmm. LiveRail was recently shut down. So mm-hmm. w- what happened there? Was it a just a bad purchase, which happens? Is, was it, has things literally changed so quickly that the technology is no longer necessary? Like, w- what was the thinking? Yeah, you know, the, the, the funny part um, about when you, when you buy companies 
um, as you sit down with the teams, and the first thing that you talk about is how we're going to integrate it. And I just find it, um, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of amused that we sit down and you talk about how you're going to integrate the people and integrate the technology. And if you do that too fast, um, you say it's gone. I say it's integrated. So it's still, so the technology <laughs> is around, but it's not called library. It, yeah, it's like, wow. Um, What's we it called? Sh- we shut down the, th- the audience network. Okay, so it's been folded into it, yeah. a broader experience. Absolutely. Then. In fact, um, we announced um, the, the beta of that um, video project. That thing is up and running and growing. In its first 14 months, the audience network we announced back in December that it was on a billion dollar run rate. Um, that thing is growing gangbusters, and we've added video, we've added mobile web, uh, and there's just so much going on with it. And um, the live rail uh, engineering team is, um, we have, there's, there's two teams, one in Seattle, one in yeah. London. The, the whole live rail leadership team uh, runs that, um, that London-based team. And, you know, those guys worked really, really hard uh, to integrate themselves, to figure out the culture, to figure out how to build uh, on our stack. And um, it would be a shame to kind of water that, water the effort that they put down into that. Gotcha. So the money was well spent in the sense that the technology has been, is still being used, but in a different package. It's in saying. a different package. It's in the audience network package. Okay. Uh, let's talk about yeah. measurement. Yeah. I know you like measurement. Sure. Uh, I, you guys have made some recent announcements about the ability for local stores to you know, better track whether I see an ad on Facebook and then actually come in and yeah. make a purchase. So just before we do that, okay. I, I feel like I, ri- I ran away from your question a little bit, and I don't want to do that. Um, sure, I'll let you keep talking about okay. Live Rail. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, I mean I'll, I'll, I'll say, let me put it this way. From, from an outsider's perspective, yeah. big purchase, the, the product Live Rail that was yeah. purchased was shut down. Yeah. We don't know from the outside exactly how much of the technology has been folded in. You say some. Yeah, yeah. I know that some of the. I know you mentioned some of the leadership. Yeah. Uh, some of the other leadership have since left. Sure. So it's not as if everyone who's joined Facebook through yeah. the library acquisition is still there. Yeah. So you know, from the outside, it doesn't necessarily maybe look like. Yeah. It was a super successful acquisition, but if you'd like to address it. Very specifically, the thing that that people are talking about, let's just call a spade a spade and talk about the exchange. The exchange is the big thing that, that we shut down. And again, I think that you have to look at what happened in the two years since we bought it. Um, the ex- it and, you know, you become a little bit of a victim of what you're preaching. So we preach a lot of measurement. We preach a lot of value. We preach the people-based stuff. And what we saw from the ecosystem standpoint from two years ago to about a year ago is we saw the inventory quality in exchanges just go off a cliff. Um, There's a bunch of people who wrote about, um, we also killed a DSP. So for the record, we were never building a DSP. But we did do a whole bunch of experiments uh, on buying stuff. Um, in open RTB exchanges. And we saw the same thing happen there as we were watching happen in um, Live Rail, and we were watching just the inventory quality go off so the cliff. So people uploading and trying to sell crummy ads. Yeah, or just the ecosystem, this ad network, that SSP, that exchange, the daisy chain of inventory that goes around them. We saw them; th- those things get passed around three, five, seven. I saw chains of seven. You'd see somebody... Um, buy something, resell it, and then buy it again. Like all in the same path. Yeah. And you'd be like, what is going on? And all of the kind of the dregs of the inventory, the least human, least viewable stuff seems to settle in these open RTB exchanges. And that got really, with our own measurement tools, looking, starting to look at it, and you got to, you know, kind of dog food your own stuff and kind of look at it and go, geez, I'm not proud of everything that's happening in the ecosystem. So if we're going to continue with this product, we got to figure, a, figure out a way to clean it up. So we pretty publicly 
uh, cut 75% of the publishers that were in the exchange as the first move to try to clean this up and see um, to see if we could move the industry that way and stay on our value narrative. Um, and we took heat for that, but we felt like that was what we needed to do to look our advertisers in, in the eye and go, yes, our mantra of value we're staying true to. Um, and then we looked at it again and more crap creeps back in. And so we did another round of it and it just got to a spot where we were like, There's wait no, a minute. Is anyone left? Yeah. It's, you get to a spot and sure. you're looking at it and with your own measurement tools and the buying that we were doing out in open exchanges was mirroring the exact same patterns. And we just said, you know what? If we're going to live by our quality mantra, um, we need to exit that open RTB realm and we need to stay in the curated, direct, API-based world that we're doing that's, that, is a, that is a mobile first um, um, play that is the audience network. Yeah. And so we looked at it and said, let's just take all the good things about the technology, all the good things, people, let's concentrate them on the area that there are actual human beings with high quality inventory. And so that just made more sense. And that's the thing that gets a lot of the, the stuff because that's what the name was associated gotcha. to. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, now let's talk about okay. measurement sure. offline. Yeah. How are you guys feeling right now about the ability to know that I saw a Target ad on my phone for shampoo, mm -hmm. and I went to Target in downtown San Francisco and actually bought a bottle of shampoo because of that ad? Because mm -hmm. that's what you want to do, and that's what you want to we be do able that. to help your advertisers. Where, where do you feel like you, you are in that process right now? We do that. Um, so um, Atlas has done that for a long time. For those of you, I don't know if everybody knows what Atlas is. Yeah, maybe just a quick. Yeah, so um, Atlas is our cross-publisher, cross-device measurement platform. So if you want to look at uh, your measurement across all your different tactics from search, desktop, mobile, cross-device, cross-browser, how does Facebook compare to Yahoo or anything else, um, Atlas is uh, a full measurement suite uh, across everything. So Atlas has done that for more than a year. Um, has done that for a long time. You can upload uh, point of sale files and it'll um, convert them into sales and it'll show up in your reports and it'll look just like uh, as if it were a web conversion and it'll give you the path analysis, show you the attribution, show you which publishers uh, ran ads um, so it that essentially, get attributed to if it. If I could jump in, it essentially connects my information in the database of Target to the information in Facebook's database and says, we know Kurt saw this ad because we yep. showed it to him. And we know that he came and ultimately, because you have his information, he used his target card or whatever to buy mm -hmm. this product. Let's connect that in the middle and show that our ads work, right? That's right. So that obviously requires a lot of things, but primarily participation from all of these retailers and, and folks, are they, mm -hmm. how do you deal with that, right? Because you can't control whether Target has my information. That's kind of on them it's to on them. get it. So right. how, how much do you like spend trying to either teach them how to do that, helping them do that, versus just simply saying, hey, come, f come find us whenever you're ready to make this jump? We spend a lot of time educating them about how powerful it is to understand value. And, how, and if you look at the winners and the losers in every category, in this, every transition has winners and losers. Search had big win. Look at Amazon. Amazon built itself on the back of search really with no television on the early days. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know that you can find a, a, a bigger winner in a category. I mean, they took on every major retailer and continue to win. And they, that started in the kind of the search revolution. Now you have the mobile revolution and you're watching lots of up and comers, um, you know, find disruption like Uber um, and, you know, what they've done, uh, f you know, f just four years ago, there were 110,000 limousine drivers in the United States. Now there's 20,000 new ones a month or some crazy number like that that they just put out. Um, so they're really disrupting a whole category um, just on mobile. Um, you talk about Dollar Shave Club um, and Harry's Razors and what they're doing mm -hmm. to CPG by leveraging mobile as the distribution channel in a category that typically um, has leveraged other people's distribution channels. And so 
there are winners and losers in every category. Sure. And so what we try to do is to go out into each category and help people understand what are the trends, what is in particular mobile, um, how is it disrupting their business, and we try to help them understand that. And in every one of those conversations, the closer that you can get to understanding the value that you're generating, did I sell more stuff because I put this ad in front of a person who saw it? I know it sounds really crazy, Mm -hmm. but it's as, it's as simple as that. And that the fact that most of them sit on their own point of sale files that go into CRM systems that are fairly readily accessible these days, because everybody over invested in the emperor's new clothes of big data, um, they can actually get to see the real value. Yeah. And so you, we spent a lot of time on education. Sure. Um, to what level do you feel, and, and obviously this sounds almost silly to bring up at this mm-hmm. point, right? Because the ads are so targeted, they're so personalized. Mm-hmm. Um, I've already gotten creepy with reference to you knowing where I am because mm-hmm. I carry my phone around. Yeah. Is there a certain level at which you feel ads get too far, too far into that personalized, creepy space? Sure. Or like where does Facebook walk that line, right? Because there's, well, I, so I see some pretty personal ads. Yeah. So where do you draw the line and say this is too personal or, or uh, invasive versus this is okay? So, so let me answer the question first as a human consumer. Okay. Um, as Dave the Facebook user. As Dave just the, the consumer who okay. walks the earth. The creepiest ads that I get are the ones that show up at my doorstep in an envelope with my name on it with my credit score. So you don't like the mail. That's re- <laughs> yeah, it's really freaking yeah. creepy, the stuff that they put on it, and it's really accurate. Um, and it's pre-authorized. I could take that thing, walk out, and buy something. Sure. Like, that makes me really nervous. I agree. That is creepy. So I think we crossed that line 40 or 50 years ago. Okay. Um, and the thing I think, though, just to get back to... Sure. It's, like, it's funny because it's true. Um, but to bring it back to, to digital, I think the thing that is causing this conversation to come back is that the data is now actually accurate. And so it was when we were back in the desktop display cookie world, everybody kind of knew it was crap. It's it's true. Everybody kind of knew that the data, that there weren't really 120 million car buyers in Ohio. We all kind of knew that. Um, and it didn't make rational sense. And so now we're getting into this mobile world that is much more stable and because of data flows and because of the relationship that you have with the consumer, um, the responsibility level goes way up. Sure. Trust is going to be a word that is going to start to come into every marketer's vocabulary more and more and more. And trust has been at the foundation of kind of everything that we've done. It's the cornerstone of that relationship that we have with with that user for a long time. So when we talk about building ad products, it starts there. And now you look at, okay, now what can I do um, to help drive value? First for the consumer, then for the marketer, then for Facebook. Sure. And that recipe has worked really well for us. We talked a little bit about that earlier, and you're watching kind of Instagram take on a little bit of that, uh, of that formula, and it's becoming really important for marketers to understand that. So there are easy rules to see. You know, um, There's the whole kind of b- bad news categories of gambling and adult and all that kind of stuff, and then there are disease states and so forth. But there are... But the consumer's appetite for more personalization to sift through all the information that they get is also growing. Um, And that's a balance. And we do lots of user testing and we ask the users and um, and we talk about that. I think there's the the white hat and the black hat stuff that's easy to see and the stuff in the middle. um, You got to constantly be asking your customers and you got to test it. Is there something specific you mentioned um, 
you know, like a credit score. Is there yeah. Yeah. something specific that you tell advertisers, yo, you know, we're not going to use this or we don't use this or well, you credit can't scores we don't do for legal, sure. you know, a whole bunch of legal reasons. There's a, and there's a whole bunch of things that, that we just don't want to know and don't want to deal with. Um, and once you get past all, um, um, you know, the child protection laws and, you know, you, you kind of get past all, all of that, um, you got to kind of, walk the walk and it's it's about being more than transparent it's about being taking that next step and we talk a lot about people based marketing so our opt outs are people based yeah and we have ad preferences so that you can go in and you can say i i like this i don't like this this is what i want i don't want to see ads from this um this one's okay and when you opt out of something it's not this goofy game when you opt out of it you're out so if you opt out on your device, you're out on all your devices. Sure. If you opt out on one browser, you're opted out on all the browsers. And if you go back and you get a silly cookie again, two seconds later, it doesn't come back. It's not a game of cat and mouse. Um, we take the ads preferences and that responsibility very, very seriously. Um, and I think that as a consumer, when I look at it, I'm all for a fair deal. And if I understand what you're going to do and you're true to it and you don't try to jerk me around with it, I'm good with that. Yeah. And I'm actually really willing to trade um, free services for ad experiences um, all kind of all the time. And, you know, if you take a look at what um, Pandora has done in particular, like they've done a really nice job of providing a fundamentally awesome service mm -hmm. uh, for lots of consumers. Um, most of their users supported by ads. And if you want to upgrade, you can. And if not, you understand that value equation. Um, and it's a very straightforward one. And they're high integrity with the data. They're high integrity with their users. And they support it with ads. And I think that that is going to be the trend. So when we start getting Facebook mailers, we're going to know that you've crossed the line officially, right? Um, if we start signal. putting your name and a credit score on it, yeah. uh, call me. I'll call you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to open up to questions in one second. Um, so I look around from, there's supposed to be microphones somewhere. Um, but last question, and we're already yeah. probably over time. So yeah. quick, quick last question. Yeah. Um, Snapchat. Snapchat yeah. has, CEO Evan Spiegel has basically said, we're not going to be creepy, right? Like, yeah. yeah, we'll target you, Kurt. We know you're in California. We yeah. know your age and your gender. That's yeah. about it, though. They say yeah. they're not going to retarget, right? They're not going to yeah. use cookies or whatever. You guys have built a business on that. Google's built a business on that. Yeah. So have others. Uh, I would never ask you to comment directly on a competitor, yeah. but... Well, you can't, uh, well, you know, can yeah. Snapchat build a business? Can, comp can a company X... I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with build, the Snapchat Build thing. a business yeah. What's without... The, Snapchat? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a Snap new thing kids oh, are using. Yeah, I'll, teach you, I'll show okay. you actually. Um, uh, can a company, yeah. any company, build an advertising business now with, while ignoring kind of that level of targeting or yeah. depth? Uh, I use Snapchat. You use Snapchat? Yeah, I, do. I won't tell. I don't. Nobody here will. Um, it's research. <laughs> um, it's a cool product. Uh, it's hot. All the cool kids are using it. Um, they also use other things, just for the record. Um, they're doing some really cool things. It's been fun to watch. Um, it's its own, it seems to be, I, I don't know, it seems to be its own phenomenon. Sure. And so... Can they do things in a new way? Geez, life would be boring if you couldn't. Um, so I, ho I hope so. But they're going to hit some challenges and marketers are going to start to ask questions when they get out of the experimental budget phase. Right. I don't know where they are. I have no idea. Um, but marketers, when you start to get to a certain spend level with marketers, when it doesn't matter who you are, Snapchat or any, any, when it's not the shiny site. new toy anymore, yeah. or just when the dollars get big enough, right? It can be really shiny. And the, when the dollars get big enough, somebody someplace says, what am I getting for this? And so as, as a, up and coming thing, if, if you're the new app, if you're the new publisher with the greatest content, if you have a sizable audience 
and you can prove that you can sell products by advertising to your by advertising to your audience, and that number is sizable, you can do anything you want. Because every marketer wants to sell more products. Mm-hmm. And if you can demonstrate value, you can do it. That's hard to do out on an island all by yourself because marketers always want to compare you. Right. How is this relative to that? What about my existing customers? Were they going to buy anyway? I have these customers who got all the way to my shopping cart. I just want to get them over the hump. How are you going to help me with that? And you start to get, marketers are smart. And so they are going to have increasing demands as they get deeper and deeper into whatever it is that they do. That's true of Facebook. That's true of Instagram. That will, I imagine, be true for Snapchat and anybody else. And so if you can prove that you can move products for marketers, marketers will listen. Yeah. And all of that proving comes through measurement. Great. That was actually, that was, that was a good, how did, how was more that? than I thought you were going to say. Huh. Uh, so yeah. I'll say it for you. It sounds like short answer boiled down is they probably need more targeting at some point. But I'll say that so you, you don't have to. Um, I don't know if we have, uh, do we have any questions? Could some, if, if anyone would like, maybe raise your hand or something. I've asked a lot of questions. It looks like, okay, excellent. Uh, right up here. Hello. Um, I was curious when you were speaking to, you know, Atlas and how kind of, you know, the information sharing and the data flow, is there like a B2B workaround where maybe your target isn't necessarily making the purchase themselves, but is there kind of, you know, uh, a model for B2B that you guys have worked with with any clients? Um, I just want to make sure that I understand the question because we work with lots of different sales things. Some... um, a lot of our customers sell their own products. They're e-commerce, retail, online, offline, brick and mortar, all that. And we can wire all those sales up. Some of them are more traditional, um, what people would call CPG, where or, or um, some people break them down into merchants, people who sell stuff, and producers, people who make stuff and sell through other channels. Or do you mean a different one where I produce something and I sell it only to businesses? Um, yeah, I produce something and I sell it only to businesses. So I am, let's use Caterpillar. I make giant construction equipment and I want to sell it to people who build lots of big stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So most of the initiatives on, on those uh, business to business things, they know who they want to market to. And so the key for them is making sure that it's the real person that they're going to actually market to. And so lots of them have lists of who these people are, CRM databases. They know the name of the CIO that they want to get to sell uh, Oracle to. Or um, they know the name of the purchaser at the hospital that they want to sell the bed to. Um, And... Because of the um, ubiquity of our ability to connect all those things together, they can go into their channels and use our measurement to identify how many of those ads actually went to those people, um, were seen by those people, and then get breakdowns of who they were and and how they work. So the the people-based marketing uh, enables B2B in a way that digital has really ignored for a long time. Thank you. We have one more over here, or over at here. least one more. Hi, Hi there. Thank you very much. This is very insightful uh, from both sides. Um, a, a question sort of piggybacking on the data side. Do mm-hmm. you see Facebook's ads managers integrating with other DMPs or allowing first-party data collections so that advertisers or publishers can bring in their first-party data sets, not just on an email or name basis? Yeah. So um, you can already import a whole bunch of different data to most of Facebook's products. Um, You can bring in retargeting data, you can bring in your site-based data, custom audience data from CRM systems, point of sale data. All that, all of that stuff already exists, but just like the live rail question, I I don't want to dodge the DMP. Is is that using a Facebook pixel though? Uh, Yes, it is. 
Okay. Or so. uh, API or a file or, I mean, there's oodles and oodles of different ways that you can do it. But just to address the DMP issue, because I mean, we've all been to a million of these. It's really boring when I give the soft answer. Thank you. Um, the DMP was built in the cookie world um, for that desktop use case that doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. Is that blunt enough? It's an answer. Thank you. <laughs> um, so it, the question is, what do you want to do? Right? If you want to use high quality data, I think you got to start with the source. Almost all the marketers that we deal with have much higher quality sources sitting in their first party assets. And so to then try to take a thing that is the shrinking asset, combine that up, figure out the 120 million car buyers in Ohio and how that applies to an actual real person when we know most of it doesn't, um, that goes to the heart of like that, the, the creepy question. That stuff's not creepy because it's not that accurate. And so stay in the accurate world of real people data and you will perform better. And there will be lots of people who will try to do lots of these tactics and will be later adopters. Um, and therein lies the opportunity for everybody in their categories to be out ahead of that. Good. Do we have time? I don't even know who I'm looking for. We have time for one more. Good. We have time for one more. Is there another one? Otherwise, I'm just going to keep asking Dave about Snapchat. No? All right. Dave, thank you so much. Cool. Thank awesome. you. Yeah.